What's up, folks? Welcome to Woodworking Against the Grain. Look here, it's 23 days till Thanksgiving. 23 short days. That's just a little over three weeks. So you need to be thinking about your Thanksgiving menu. What we're going to do today is make some pre-Thanksgiving chicken and dumplings. This is a good chicken and dumpling recipe. If you've already got a good one, stay with it. If you don't have a good one, here's one you might want to try. Stay with us. I like to do these old-fashioned recipes like this sometimes because here's the, here's the deal. Y'all know it well as I do. We've raised a generation of people who don't know how to cook. That's a tragedy right there. A lot of people that you know, some of them are your neighbors, some of them are your friends, some of them are your family, some of them are all the above, and they can't cook. They couldn't find a stove with both hands. So I, I want to help remedy that problem. I don't want homemade cooking, old-fashioned cooking from scratch to become a lost art in this world. I just couldn't sleep knowing that was going on around me. So I'm going to do what I can to make homemade recipes. If you're into that sort of thing, that's awesome. If you're not, more power to you. Do it however you want to do it, but have some fun in the kitchen. Today we're going to have some fun by making some good old-fashioned chicken and dumplings. Everybody likes chicken and dumplings just about. There's a few people out there that don't really like dumplings, but we're going to have them seen about. You're going to start in this pot right here, and I'm going to zoom this in in a minute where you can see what's going on down here. In this pot over here, I have got probably maybe two quarts of good chicken stock that I'm bringing up to a simmer. Right here I've got the meat of one chicken. I prefer roasted chicken in chicken and dumplings. If you like boiled chicken, that's fine. I prefer it to be uh, roasted chicken. It just has a better flavor to me. So what I did after I boned this chicken, I put the bones and the skin in a pot of water and I boiled them for about an hour and that makes a good rich chicken stock. If you want to buy your chicken broth, that's fine. I do that sometimes too. But we also make our own stock when we can out of uh, chicken bones and chicken skin. If you want to do that, that's good too. Anyway, however you do it, I got a pot full of chicken stock over here that we're going to cook these dumplings in in just a few minutes. You're going to need four cups of flour to start with. And we're going to make these dumplings and let this dough rest for about five or six minutes before we roll it out. Dumplings... They're going to be put in some hot boiling broth, so they need to be a little bit tough. They need to be able to stand up to that boiling. Wouldn't you want to be tough if somebody was going to throw you in some hot boiling water? We're going to let this set, and we're going to knead this dough a little while, give it, work that gluten just a little bit to give it some integrity to hold up to that boiling point. It's time for my afternoon coffee. That's why I hope you've got one, too. Uh, I don't have enough to go around, but uh, it's a good rainy day here, and uh, a cup of coffee around 3 in the afternoon, you just can't hardly do without. Now, let's talk about these dumplings a little bit. We're going to mix up this dough. We're going to put four cups of flour in this bowl over here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the camera angle a little bit where you can see a little bit more about what's going on down here. All right, we're going to start by spooning four cups of flour over here into our mixing bowl. We want to spoon this flour so we don't pack it down and get more in there to start with than we need. That's one. I got my chicken stock here just now coming to a simmer, so I turned it down. We're not ready for it yet, but I want it to be ready. Then we'll have to wait on it. That's two. You always want to spoon your flour so you don't pack it down too much. You can always add a little more if you need to. We're going to work some in this too as we go along. This is going to be our fourth cup right here, fourth somewhat level cup of flour. Now, to that I'm going to add two and a half teaspoons of salt. Two tablespoons of baking powder. This is all-purpose flour. It's not self-rising. And we're going to 
kind of stir these dry ingredients together a little bit. That way we get our baking powder all mixed in there good. You don't want just part of this to rise and part of it not to. You don't have to stir it much, just enough to kind of get all your dry ingredients mixed around there. Now to that we're going to add two cups plus four tablespoons of whole milk. I like to add this about a little at a time and kind of gently stir that into this flour. We're going, what we're making here basically is bread dough. That flour soaks that up pretty quick. A little bit more in there. It's going to take all of this milk. I'm just adding it a little bit at a time. Makes it a little bit easier to stir and you don't kick up as much dry flour that way. This is just almost a good biscuit dough recipe, except we're going to we're going to need this dough a little bit and make them a little bit tougher than you would want a biscuit. Otherwise, if you didn't need this dough very much, this would make a pretty good pretty good biscuit recipe by itself. You could add a little bit of a little bit of a, some kind of grease to this, make them a little bit flaky. You'd have a pretty good solid biscuit recipe right here with this. All right, we've just about got all the flour soaked up with that there. I'm going to add the rest a little dab of this milk. Stir that in. And then we're going we're gonna to let this dough rest for about five minutes. And then we're going to put it out on some flour. We're going to work some flour into it, and we're going to knead it. And then we're going to roll it out into some good homemade dumplings. I'm going to roll this out with a walnut rolling pin that I built out in the woodworking against the grain shop the other day. I've got this stirred to a pretty good smooth consistency. I'm going to let it set right there about five minutes and we'll be back to roll these out. Don't run off. All right, we've let our dough rest here for about five minutes. Now I'm going to put some, put some flour out on the countertop here. Give us a place to work this dough. I try to, try to work this with one hand while it's real wet, so I keep one hand clean enough to do something else with it if I need to. We're just going to dump this dough right out on top of this flour. Then we're going to go to work on it for a little while. Try to get as much of this as you can out of the bowl here. Makes that easier to wash up later. Now once you get that, you want to put you a little flour on top of that too. Make it a little bit easier on your hands there. Don't be afraid to get in this and get dirty. We're going to work some flour into this. And you may have to get a little bit more. I like to have these kind of tough so they'll stand up to the cooking. Uh, if you like a good quick dumpling, you can cut good flour tortillas into strips and drop them into that uh, boiling broth over there. We do that sometimes. We don't have time to make them like this. Flour tortilla makes a pretty good dumpling. It's a little different flavor. Some people don't like it as well. Uh, I like it pretty good. We make them that way a lot. Once you get this dough to where it's picked up enough uh, flour that it's not sticking to your hand too bad, we can start working this a little bit. We're going to knead this just like we would if we were making a loaf of bread. The best way to knead that dough is to fold it back to you and then push it away fold it back to you and just push it away from you and as you go along if you need just a little more flour just pick it up keep your flour up here in a pile we're going to need these for about three to five minutes not not as long as we would for a, a loaf of bread or a cinnamon roll or whatever but when you feel it starting to get a little bit of elasticity to it that's a good place for you to stop. You just want to make them 
a little bit tough where they're not so delicate that they fall apart on you. You want these to, to hold up good while you're cooking them. We've about got this where it's picked up enough flour that they're not sticking anymore, so we're going to get a good ball of dough here and just get it kneaded out there a little bit. Besides, this kneading dough is a lot of fun. If you like to cook, this is one of the one of the favorite things to do. Just make a mess and have a good time in the kitchen. You need to have your Thanksgiving menu planned out pretty soon. It's coming up on you pretty quick. You need to make sure that somebody's making some good dumplings and somebody's making some good dressing. Somebody's baking a turkey. Somebody needs to make a good pumpkin pie. There's certain things that you just really need to have with a Thanksgiving meal, and to me, pumpkin pie is one of them. So you need to make sure if you're having a pretty good sized gathering that uh, somebody's got the pumpkin pie situation covered. Otherwise, you'll end up there with a Thanksgiving day with no pumpkin pie. That wouldn't be good. Now, this is starting to be a little bit springy. That's a good thing. We're going to call that kneading done here in just a minute, and then we're going to roll these out to about a half inch thick. Then we're going to start dropping them in this hot chicken stock over here. This chicken stock has already been salted, got quite a bit of black pepper in it. If you don't like black pepper, don't put very much in there, don't put any in there. I like a lot of black pepper in dumplings, so I got quite a bit in that stock there. Salt it up to taste. I think that's going to be enough kneading for that. I believe it's going to be good right there. I'm going to put a little bit more flour out here. Smear it around just a little bit there. Pat that out a little bit. And I'm going to go over here and get this walnut rolling pin. And I'm going to put a little bit of flour on it so the dough won't stick. And we're just going to roll these out. This recipe makes quite a few dumplings. If you're just making, making dumplings for two to four people, you cut this recipe in half and you'll be just fine. This uh, way I've got this one made, this would feed quite a few people. I'm going to roll this out to a little thinner than a half inch because when you put these dumplings, and remember this when you, when you start to boil your dumplings, when you put them in that hot broth, they're going to swell up at first and then they'll relax some. So you want to roll these out to probably, oh, a quarter, three-eighths thick, something like that, about like that right there. That's a pretty good thickness. Then you just cut them into strips, however wide and however long you want them to be. Be careful and don't cut the countertop because you'll get in trouble for that. I'm going to take the lid off this. Now, I've got a good simmer going in this pot right here. I'm just going to, and I'm going to turn the fire up a little bit as I put these in so it'll keep simmering. I'm going to try to be real careful here and not cut this countertop because I can see that not going over very well at all. That's about what they need to look like when you get one of them cut. You can make them shorter than that if you want to or whatever, but uh, I like that thickness right there. That's about probably a quarter inch, maybe three-eighths thick. If you like them thinner than that, you can just roll them out a little bit more. We've got some, we did a pretty good job kneading this because you can see, I hope you can see that when I take the rolling pin off of it, it springs back a little bit. That means that we've worked that gluten some and they ought to be 
tough enough to hold up to our our cooking process here. Now I'm just going to keep cutting these and putting them in this broth and then once I get all the dumplings done I'm going to show you how we're going to add our chicken back what we're going to do to finish this off. Don't run off. Alright, now we've boiled these dumplings for about 20 minutes. They're just about done. All we like is just finishing them up and what I'm going to do I'm going to zoom this camera in on this pot over here to show you what they look like what we're going to do to finish them up and then we'll taste of them and see if they come out just right. Stay with us. Now you can see these simmering in this pot. See how those dumplings have puffed up there but they're still, they were strong enough to stay in one piece. Now that's, they're good just like this. You could just turn the fire off right now and eat these and they'd be plenty good. But here's what's going to set yours apart from other ones that are common, okay? Right here in this measuring cup, I've got three-fourths of a cup of evaporated milk. And we're going to add that to this pot of dumplings right now, and that's what's going to cream them up like you would not believe. And we're going to just stir that in and watch how the color changes we're going to put just a little bit more fire under them and bring them back to a simmer for just a couple of minutes, all right? See how creamy that looks? Now, I'm going to add a little bit more of black pepper to these because that's just how I roll. Try to use your black pepper freshly ground. You'd be surprised at the difference in the flavor it makes. Now, look here. This is the meat of one chicken. It's the dark and the white meat. If you don't want to put the dark meat in your dumplings, that's fine. Some people do. Some people don't. If you want just the breast meat in there, that's fine. But this is the entire meat from one whole roasted chicken. Now I'm going to stir that in and I'm going to bring this back to a small boil for just a minute and then we're going to taste of these and see if they're worthy of Thanksgiving. Don't go away. We'll finish up here in just a minute. All right, our dumplings come out pretty good. They're real hot, but let's taste of them and see how they did here. They came out real creamy. The chicken's good and tender, and there's a, a good, strong chicken flavor to that stock we used. So let's see how good these dumplings are. That's hot. Mmm, that's good. Got a lot of good black pepper flavor there, if you like that. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching. Come back to see us.